Hey there guys, my name is Clem from The Graphy, and this video is the first video of our Node.js crash course from our All You Need To Know About series here on YouTube. If you like this type of content, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe because that really helps out our channel a lot. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. So in this video, I'm going to be just introducing you guys to Node.js. And to follow along with this video, uh, you don't need to have an experience with back-end programming or server languages or anything of the sort. It's a totally beginner-friendly video. So that's why I'm taking it from the start. Um, you know, it, it, if you're not a beginner as well, you can also gain a lot from this video. So just, uh, you know, stay along. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be going through some concepts, some beginner concept with Node.js. But uh, I feel like having a good introduction to any topic is fundamental for you being a master of that topic. So enough of my yapper, let's go, go on ahead and see what actually is Node.js. So to put simply, okay, when, when someone asks you what is Node.js, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine, uh, which simply enables you to write JavaScript out of the browser, which originally that was the only place we could make JavaScript work in. But right now, uh, I, I believe 2010, the Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine was introduced, which enabled us to be able to write JavaScript on a server, which is really revolutionary and has a lot of advantages, which I'll go over soon. And uh, yeah, it's a free open source tool, so you don't have to pay any money to access Node.js. It runs on every platform, pretty much. Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac, and, you know, it's, it's a very user-friendly framework, pretty much. So Node.js uses JavaScript on the server, as I said before. So what can Node.js do? Node.js is just like any other backend language. It's like PHP, it's like ASP.NET. It can do certain things, but it has some advantages over the other, which I said we were going to go over. So basically, just like other backend server-side languages, Node.js can generate dynamic page content. It can create open, read, write, delete, and close files on the server just like any other back-end server-side language, which is very important because back then, JavaScript could not even be considered to do any of these things. It's actually made JavaScript like pretty powerful. Node.js can collect data that has been typed in, in the front end of a website or an application and then process that data. It can add, delete, and modify the data in the database. So we have database control as well using JavaScript, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let's move on ahead. So why would we choose JavaScript as opposed to, say, any other backend language like Python or something? Number one, it's non-blocking. We'll, we'll go over that a little bit more in a future video. But when someone says something is non-blocking, it, it means that it's on a single thread, it's on a single thread loop where no actions are blocked by other actions in the flow on the server. Uh, it's a little difficult to understand right now, but just uh, take it like it's built for scalability of systems in, in the sense that a lot of things can be done. A lot of operations, high data intensive operations can be done without needing to consider adding multiple threads to make that work. Consider how PHP can handle a backend request, let's say like a request to uh, handle a file in the backend. The way it usually works for PHP or ASP.NET is when a task is uh, being done to open the file system, the, the server has to wait for that file system to open and read the file, and then it returns the content to the client. But Node.js doesn't need to wait. There's no wait time per se for all these things. You know, it, it allows things to be done asynchronously, which means you don't have to wait before an action is actually done. That's a lot of talk for this uh, small point, but it's very important in understanding the huge advantage that this holds because you're able to build lightweight, efficient applications really quickly and without thinking too much of the structure, talking about like adding multiple threads can release really fast and really efficient applications without having to bother about whether or not it's gonna block the code or anything. The second point I have over here is you can use a single programming language for your entire full stack project. Uh, usually before Node.js came out, we used to be able to only use JavaScript on the front end, meaning that we couldn't like have this uh, bi-directional flow of function sharing that we have currently right now with Node.js and front end JavaScript. Before we just used to do JavaScript on the front end and then we needed to code like PHP on the back end. 
which means we need to memorize two different programming syntaxes, which is a lot of work, right? So it's really eliminated the need to learn multiple languages to do a, the, the same task. So if you know JavaScript, Node.js is going to be the ideal backend language for you. And of course, the third advantage here is it has a large ecosystem. It has one of the best supports for server-side languages right now because it's so user-friendly, so easy to use. So there's a lot of people contributing as a large community, people helping others solve problems. And this, it can really speed up your development process as well. So we'll talk more about that in a future video, of course. Yeah, now that we've uh, talked a lot on this, quite a bit, I must say, on all these uh, things, let's go on ahead to see how exactly we use Node.js. And of course, uh, I'd encourage you guys to have some knowledge of JavaScript before taking on this Node.js course. But uh, that being said, I will also explain every single line of code I write. I'll be going over basic JavaScript concepts in this video, in this series, but uh, you should be able to follow along if you have any idea of programming in general. To use uh, Node.js, of course, you need to have it installed on your computer. So you can just go to nodejs.org. I'll leave this link in the description below, and you can just uh, literally download any version of uh, Node.js you want here, and uh, you can also install it with using a core command on your uh, Mac OS. You know, depending on your uh, operating system, you can easily install Node.js. I think I'd rather go here. Yeah, you can just download it like pretty much here on this uh, Node.js.org. Just click on download, and then you will be good to go. Awesome. So. Of course, the code editor I'm using is Visual Studio Code, which is one of the most popular code in, coding editors out there. Of course, you can follow along with any other code editor, but you want to follow along to the T. What I'm doing, I'd encourage you to download Visual Studio Code, depending on the operating system you are in right now, whether it's Windows, whether it's Ubuntu, whether it's Mac OS, the installation process is essentially very uh, simple. And once you are done with the installation of Node.js, uh, you can just go ahead here and say uh, Node-V, and you can see that I'm using uh, uh, version 16.20. Once it shows you this, it means you're good to go. If it doesn't show you anything uh, after you install it, uh, you pretty much need to maybe just close your terminal or command prompt and run this command again. And then if you chose over here, you have properly installed Node.js. Awesome. So let's us start with our first Node.js code, pretty much. So as you can see here, I have opened the Visual Studio Code, which I told you guys to download before. And I'm going to open, it's, it's, it's a total, totally empty Visual Studio Code, there's nothing in here. So I'm going to open a brand new file. I'm going to go over to my desktop and a brand new folder, excuse me. And I'm going to open Node.js Crash Course here. Awesome. This comes out when you newly install Visual Studio Code. Just say yes, I, tr I trust the authors of the desktop. Just click on yes. It's not a big deal. So awesome. I have a totally empty Node.js crash course folder. Uh, I can just clear this one here. Cool. So it's totally empty. I'm going to start from scratch and type in our first Node.js code. So I'm just going to come here and click on new file and say server.js. And I'm going to type in a very simple code which is very familiar to you if you code front-end JavaScript. Console.log, hello world, right? And Visual Studio Code has uh, a terminal embedded in its uh, code editor. And I can just either click on Control and backtick at the top to bring it out. Uh, again, hold Control and a backtick. Um, and I can just, now that I'm here, you can see that I am automatic, automatically in the Node.js crash course folder and I can easily access the server.js here. And how do I how do we run a node.js code? It's very simple. We type in node and we type in server. We don't need to add the JS, which you can if you want to, but we do not need to add the JS because the node runtime knows that this server, this server that uh, it's uh, linked to this file name here 
should have a .js for it to be run. And uh, this .js is extremely important uh, for any Node.js file that we create. So I'm just going to do node, node server and press enter. And see what, see what happens is it runs this code and then it terminates the program. So it just logs hello world to the terminal here and then it terminates the program. So that's a very simple um, Node.js code. Of course, we will be doing some things much more complicated in future videos, but if you followed along, you can say that you have written your first Node.js code and that is it for this video. So let's, you know, call it a day here. And the future video, we'll be talking more about the basics of Node.js and focusing on the architecture of the framework here. So that is pretty much it. <laughs> if you liked this video, please leave a like and subscribe and we'll go back for the next video. Bye.